Hey, hello friends, welcome to this new Flutter tutorial and in this we'll be learning about how to integrate Cloud Firestore to your Flutter project. In the previous tutorial we learned how to integrate Firebase authentication and hence we created a system in which we um, maintain the state of the user whether he's logged in or logged out. So right now I'm logged into the application and what we want to do is we want to read a list of users that I have created here in the database. I've chosen Cloud Firestore uh, as it's more robust in nature. So I have created a users collection in which there are a number of users with a different user ID and each user has age, name and sex. So uh, I want to read this information and display this on the device. Okay. So right now oh, I have users list and all the users with their gender is being displayed on the main screen. So we're going to create this from scratch. So let's get started. Okay, so now you can see that I'm in a blank uh, activity. I have the code from the previous tutorial that is just to maintain the state and log in the user to the application. We'll be working for the most part in this main screen that is shown to the user uh, when, uh, if he's signed in. Okay, so right now in the main screen I don't have anything. I just have a scaffold that, ha that has an app bar with a title uh, and then app bar has a deep orange color. The, so the very first thing that we need to do is we want to import uh, the package called Cloud Firestore. So for that I'll go to the pubspec.yaml file and in here I'll just say Cloud Cloud Firestore and you need to keep in mind the indentation and now we can click on the packages upgrade okay so once the package upgrade is done in the pubspec.yaml file uh, we need to go to the main screen or in, in your case it can be the main.r file so um, right now I just have a scaffold here with an app bar and just a container in the body so I need to import the cloud firestore package that will be available to you now because you have imported the package in the pubspec.yaml file and uh, now in the container I'll have a child so what this child will be we want to listen to the stream that is coming from the Cloud Firestore collection basically. So we'll keep listening to that stream and once the data is ready we'll display the data here or else we'll just show the loading sign. So just to read the stream what I will do at this point is I'll just create a new stream builder. So the stream builder does take in a stream, the source stream and for the source stream I'll just say Firestore dot instance dot collection and the collection if you remember is that I have the users collection here so I'll just type in users and I'll get the snapshots so basically we want to get the snapshot of the users snapshot keeps updating as the data in the uh, original database gets updated. So snapshots, if you have used Firestore, you know the difference between the snapshot and uh, the get statement. So we'll, we're going to get the snapshot stream from the Firestore. And there are also some other options like documents and all that. So get documents. So that is statically working. We want to get the data as soon as it, it's updated on the server. So for that, we'll get the snapshot. And from the snapshot, we want the builder to get the context and the snapshot that is received from the server. And here, we'll, re we'll return a list view. A list view. Okay, so in the list view, we'll have a children property. And right now, we'll just keep it empty. And a semicolon here. Okay, so what I have done is we'll listen to the stream of the users and we'll get the snapshots and we'll pass that to the builder and the builder then gets the snapshot and populates the list view so now what we'll do is we'll create a function we'll just name it uh, uh, make list widget I'm just naming this for the sake of just naming it um, async snapshot so basically the type of the snapshot is async snapshot because we're getting the data asynchronously and I'll just call this snapshot and in the function we'll make this return a list of widgets 
because that is the thing we want to get uh, and we'll replace this statement here make list widget and we'll pass in the snapshot so basically we're getting the snapshot from the stream and we're passing that to the builder which then gets passes uh, then gets passed down to the make list widget function which will process the snapshot and will return us the suitable widget uh, in this case a list of children or just a loading sign so right now what we'll do is I'll just return snapshot dot data dot we want to get the documents documents dot map we want to map through each document and uh, we want to return we'll get the uh, document here and we want to return a simple text view for now just for now we'll return a simple text view called data with a text of data so we're not doing much right now okay so if I try to run this right now you can see that th this method is getting the snapshot and just reading the snapshot and returning the data here so when I run this hopefully we'll get an error so yeah there is the error so the dynamic is not a subtype of list widget so why, why are we getting this error so basically we're getting the error because this map does not know that it's it's making a list of uh, widgets for itself so what we want to do is we want to just set the type of widget here so this map now knows that we have set these uh, type of elements explicitly in this case the widgets and it's returning the data accordingly it's returning uh, a list view of widgets uh, that that contains each item uh, in which each item is containing a text view so when I run this app now uh, okay so we have got another error widget is not a subtype of list widget okay so why is that error dot document dot return oh sorry we need to also put two list here so we basically need to con uh, convert the map statement to return a list view okay because we're returning that from the method and now when I run the app let's see what happens yeah you can see that for the four items in the database we're getting four items of text view with the field data here so this is just a basic way to read the data now what we want to do is we want to uh, read actual data from here so for that what I will do is I'll just change this text to list tile and the list tile further contains a title that we want to keep uh, documents and the field name here we want to keep it the name of the user and the subtitle of the list tile to be document sorry document sex okay so right now when I run the app you can see that uh, okay string is not a subtype of widget oh sorry I'm just reading the data in the wrong way we need to pass in the text with that field and text with that field because the uh, sorry because the title and the subtitle require a widget uh, to be passed and we were passing a static string there so okay right now you can see that we can see the four items being displayed on the screen and the data is being uh, read from the database here so if I create a new item here right now let's create a new item let the name be uh, let the name be mark 2 ah, Tony Stark Tony Stark and let's the age be a number that's going to be 32 and here are the six it's going to be male and when we save that we go here and you can see that the data is updated right now so there is one more thing that we want to do here in the application because uh, it's not quite acceptable at this point because let's imagine we don't have any data and the application does not return anything so what do we do in that case so uh, for that 
we'll just come to this builder method here. Instead of just always returning a list view, what we want to do is we want to create a switch statement in which we'll pass snapshot dot connection state. So snapshot dot connection state will return the uh, state of connection. For example, it is waiting or it is active or the processing is done. Okay. So in case of snapshot, the processing is not always done because the snapshot is continuously listening to the data that is being stored in the fire store. So for the case one, we'll pass connection state dot waiting. And in this case, we'll return a circular progress indicator. And in the other case, we'll keep it default. And we'll return the list view that we were previously looking at. Okay, so what this will do is it will just check uh, every time the stream changes, it will check whether the snapshot has the data or it doesn't. If the data is still in, with, in the waiting state, we'll show the progress indicator or as, else we'll show the list view. So when I run the app now, you can see, let me just run the app again. And for a small duration, you can see that uh, the uh, app loads and the data is shown. Yeah. So right now, the progress indicator is not being shown. I think th that is up there. So I'll just change the progress indicator. I'll just uh, wrap that around the center. So now the progress will be shown in the center. And you can see that when I run the app again, you can see for a short duration of time, there is the progress indicator. Yeah, just a small thought because the connection, the internet connection is really good. So I, I don't think that will be visible. So yeah, that is a simple process on how to integrate Cloud Firestore into your Flutter project. We basically added the Cloud Firestore package here. We uh, did the package upgrade and then we went to the main screen and we added a stream builder that will listen to the uh, user's collection and get the snapshot and then we'll pass the snapshot to the builder. The builder will then look at the snapshot and will check if the connection is in waiting state or the processing is done. Uh, if the if the connection is in waiting state, it will sh display a circular progress bar or else it, it will display a list view. For the list view, we're passing the snapshot to this function and this function maps through the documents that are in the snapshot uh, and uh, the map knows that uh, it's going to return a list of widgets because we are explicitly defining the map uh, as the category of widgets and then we convert that to the list view and then we pass that to the uh, list view here so this is just a simple tutorial and for the sake of time being I'll just create a new document uh, I'll just create an auto ID I set the name to um, Steven and I'll set the sex to male and I'll set the age to a number that is 27 so when I save this, you can see that uh, Steven is automatically added to this list view. Okay, so I hope you learned a lot in this tutorial and I'll be coming up with a new tutorials every now and then. So uh, do hit me in the comments to uh, uh, to tell me what, what type of tutorials do you want in future. Uh, tutorials on React.js or Electron.js or any other technology that you want me to make the tutorials on. And uh, if you like the tutorial, please hit the, hit the like button and do comment in the comment section below and do share and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. And uh, thank you very much. See you next time.